Yeah, but see, there's two things that frustrate me to no end about today's game as we know it. Number one, defensive players don't know what a strike zone is anymore because it's so inconsistent. Number two. The greatest fans on earth. It's a bold statement, but would you expect anything less from Philadelphia? 58 years of heartache creates a toughness, a grit, a resolve not found in most. Sure, our prayers were answered, but now that we've had a taste, we're looking for more. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Welcome back. It is the uh, Eagles postgame show, Pondley Hockey postgame show. We're live at Ocean Casino, a beautiful place. A lot of activity going on behind us with, uh, with the uh, NFL games. Uh, a couple of results that uh, we should get into uh, before uh, we proceed with uh, Dr. Bruce Grossinger and uh, address some injuries. Uh, the Packers are losing, and it looks like they're getting demolished uh, by the Minnesota Vikings. So the Vikings come in next week maybe on a major high. Uh, the Browns beat the Panthers. So uh, my man Baker did not get his revenge today yeah. at home yeah. against the Cleveland Browns. 26-24, the Browns. Uh, beat the Panthers uh, with uh, their quarterback situation. And uh, the Commanders win. And Carson Wentz has a big day, throwing for 313 yards four and four touchdowns. touchdowns. Oh, let the four TDs begin. for Carson oh, we're today. Hear it now. You, you know, you know we're going to hear it now. <laughs> and the first week of the regular season, we already have a tie in the books. Which is hard to believe. The Colts really? and the Texans tied. Oh, yeah, they, they tied. Tie. That, that is hard to believe. Uh, all right, so uh, the Eagles win 38 to 35. And uh, all, all counts, good win. You get out of the way. They, they had the game in control. A couple things that we've quibbled about today. Uh, but also we have to address some, some, some injuries that uh, may have happened. Now, there was a play that we looked at where uh, it was a dirty hit. In fact, I think he got ejected yeah. after this play. Yeah. Double personal foul where uh, they, they rang uh, Jalen Hurts pretty good when he was on the ground, a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. And it looked like to us that that would have been a concussion protocol hit. Well, I mean, it looked like it would have been, but you know, when you when you really go back and you look at the film, you know, even though the strike was with the crown of the head, it wasn't really helmet to helmet. It was in the it was in the neck, you know, head area, and that's why you know he got originally flagged, you know, for unsportsmanlike, and then they got into a little tussle over there, and he got another flag, and that's the one that cost him, you know, to be out of the game. But you know, I mean, it's it's just one of those situations where. You know, slowly but surely, running quarterbacks learn their lessons. You hope some of them. Like a guy like Michael Vick never got it, never understood it. He was like, I, I don't like to slide. You know, I, I, I didn't like to slide know you know, in, in baseball. I don't know yeah. how to do it. Um, these guys learn over time. You know, if you want a long career and this is how you play, I guarantee you Lamar Jackson's going to run the ball a lot different than he ran it last year yeah. after being injured and missing all the games that he missed. But you take enough of those types of hits – at some point in time, you know, the, the, something goes off in your mind where you're like, you know, I'm already protected. So if I'm protected, let me help myself. Let me add an extra layer of protection. Get what you can get and get out of bounds or get what you can get and get down. Yeah, but see, there's two things that frustrate me to no end about today's game as we know it. Number one, defensive players don't know what a strike zone is anymore because it's so inconsistent. Number two, we don't know what pass interference is anymore <laughs> because you see hand-to-hand -hand combat. One play, they let it go. Next, you, next play is touch football. They call him P.I. Yeah. So I understand why defensive players in particular are extremely frustrated. We understand the game now caters to the offense. Fans allegedly want to see more points in the ball. They want to see pinball football is what they want to see. But you got defenses out there playing their house out as well, and they don't know what the rules are. Even though you, you read what the rule says, but the people calling the rules – are so inconsistent in calling. You know what the problem is? The problem is the people that make the rules are guys that never really played football before. There you so go. they don't they don't understand the speed of the game. You know, it's it, and 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 consider this, even even the blow, and I'm not I'm not trying to exonerate right, the kid right. who hit Jalen today. Right. That was just a plain, yes. flat out dirty play. Right. Okay. But Mike, if you're running the ball and I'm coming to tackle you, okay, and I've locked on target you know, chest to waist, the minute that I go to strike you, your natural reaction is this. 
Yep. Okay. So now you've lowered the, the the strike zone and you've brought your head into it, not by by my fault, but by your fault. Exactly. And then you get a exactly. flag. You yep. get a flag for that adjustment. Yeah. And w when I did everything that I could to play the game the right way within the parameters of the game, and you change your level, yet I'm the one that gets flagged for it. It yeah. makes no sense it's at supposedly all. Supposedly they're they're looking to address that kind of thing, but uh, they haven't yet, and they haven't figured out what's a. Uh, uh, the penalty, what's not. But, you know, let's get some medical opinions, some legit medical opinions. We play doctors on TV, but we aren't. Let's go to a real doctor. He is, of course, <laughs> our own sports doc. Dr. Bruce Grossinger uh, joins us. Hello, Doc. Welcome to the show. And first of all, let's address the Jalen Hurts hit because you were watching it right along with us. What did you see on that play? And as a doctor, what would have been uh, your uh, advice there? Well, when I, when I first saw it, I was concerned, along with you, Mike, that it was a dirty hit because he was he was to the ground, and I noted that both the uh, the helmet and the shoulder pads contacted the player, and we were all concerned about Jalen Hurts. After that, he popped right up. There were three opportunities to go into the to the protocol. One, it could have been cued in by the sidelines, that is, by the coach. Two, Jalen himself, or three, there's a booth individual who could have said that this is a possible concussion. That's a slippery slope, because once you go into the tent and you go through the concussion protocol, there are some ophthalmologic tests, and at that point, it's very tenuous as to the return. So he dodged a bullet there. That harkens me back to the New York Jets game, if you recall. There was a similar dirty hit, where Jalen ran out of bounds, he got hit, you know, again dirty, and we're all concerned. And I guess when Jalen runs this much, 70 times, there's going to be a statistical time where he will get hurt. But he did dodge a bullet, and I'm happy to report that we spoke to John McMullen, and there's no report of any concussion. So uh, we're happy that Jalen appears to be okay. All right, and the injury report uh, apparently is, is not significant. Fletcher Cox did limp off, uh, but did come back in the game, and I guess Derek Barnett is, is still being bothered by the knee, right? Yeah, from what I'm being told, they're still evaluating uh, Derek Barnett. No, they will further evaluate him uh, back here in Philadelphia. Um, you know, when you're talking about knee injuries in particular, Doc, um, are you surprised by the volume of knee injuries we see in, in, in today's game? These players are so much bigger, so much faster, so much stronger, and, it's, and they don't practice as much as they used to. Does it surprise you, though, that even though they're more well-conditioned athletes, that you have a high volume of knee injuries? It doesn't surprise me because knowing the knee joint itself, it does support the body and many of these gentlemen are extremely muscular and are extremely agile. So you have a combination of mass and force. So if we look at physics and you look at the knee, which is just a hinge joint, so when the knee gets hit, particularly from the side, definitely prone to different types of injuries, not only the, the dreaded ACL, but also PCL, cruciate injuries. And we don't know the extent of Derek Barnett's injury, and we won't know really until tomorrow when an MRI is conducted on his left knee. Doc, you know, I, I, I got a question. And for me, you know, I, this is a point of contention for me, and it has nothing to do with the actual injury report, but it has more to do, you know, with shoe construction, if you will. You know, back in my day, you know, you had a, a double mole shoe, which meant that, you know, at the at the ball of the foot, the shoe broke, you know, so the foot could anatomically work the way that it was made to work. In the name of lighter shoes, you know, shoe companies have acquiesced to, you know, these players and their desire for lighter shoes. And they've now made a single mole shoe, which means that that shoe doesn't bend the way that the old school shoes used to bend. Um, how much of that, in your opinion, kind of plays into it? And I think that's something that really needs to be investigated because in our day, we didn't have as many ACL injuries as they had today. I don't know whether that's, a, that's an effect of guys being bigger, faster, and stronger or shoe construction. Yeah, and you make a very good point. I like to do that with the football helmet analogy. Football helmets are not made out of steel. They're made out of a material it's supposed to give. And like you say, Seth, the two-piece foot, the two-piece shoe is allowed to give. So those forces are really transmitted and diffused rather than directed to the foot. When you have a molded 
shoe, a lot of that directs downwards into the foot and ankle, the ankle mortis. And I think because they prefer to have a lighter shoe, they feel like they run faster. I think that does confer less protection to them. All right, that's Dr. Bruce Grossinger, the sports doc. He'll be joining us on um, every uh, Eagles post-game show here, and we'll find out more about the injury situation with the Eagles, obviously, tomorrow on the, uh, the after-game press conference, the day after press conference. It is the Pond La Hockey post-game show. I'm Mike Missanelli with Derek Gunn and Seth Joyner, and we're coming back. More of the show continues after this. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles.